Bad news, we broke Topsy. We accidentally fried the BMS. It's on the low voltage side. We accidentally sent the low wrong voltage to the computer, Fry the computer, which means the BMS is the battery management system. It controls the batteries, so we can't drive it. It was a learning opportunity for us. It was allowed us to test the theory, can we drive it off the generator alone? And what we found is we can, but we need a different three in one that can handle a bigger voltage range. So today we're just changing that out. So because this is a generator, it runs at one RPM. You get one steady voltage, which sounds great. And this is a mistake. We probably should have realized it. When the throttle comes on it and you're asking for power out of the back end of the generator, the generator actually lugs down a little bit. When it lugs down, it means the speed decreases of just a tiny bit, but that tiny bit in speed decrease was dropping the voltage level below where the three in one wanted to see it. So the way it is with this computer, if it sees any voltage that isn't where it is, it defaults on the side of safety and it shuts it off. We programmed everything in here that if we see something that it doesn't expect, it shuts it down. We just defaulted on the side of safety. I think that's the way to go, especially on a prototype. Unfortunately, it means that we need to make sure that voltage stays exactly where the computer expects it to see. So because we're gonna be working on the high voltage side today, We've actually pulled out the plugs on the batteries. And now what Eric's gonna do, he's gonna put on these special high voltage gloves. He's gonna climb up there with a voltmeter and he's gonna check to make sure the system's off. Even though the batteries are disconnected, even though the generator's off, you still wanna verify the powers on there. We're 99% sure there's no power, but you always, always wanna check. You don't know where there's gonna be a capacitor storing power, something in line. So he's gonna check all the things that all the high voltage cables that lead to the box, make sure it's safe to work on. This is something that's definitely getting changed on the new trucks. On the new trucks, we're integrating this into the back of the cab. The three in one is being included in there. And on headache racks for retrofit kits, we're also found the space. This three in one just, it got forgotten during the design of the power distribution unit. Oh well, lessons during prototyping. Yeah, so like Chase was saying, what you're seeing here is a three-in-one inverter. It does the power steering pump, air compressor, and actually this one will be able to charge our 24-volt, 12-volt batteries at three kilowatt instead of a kilowatt. But more importantly, the reason why we're putting this in is the generator right now can only produce about 590 volts because this one was rated for that maximum. This one is rated for 750 volts, meaning that now we can actually get to like 1800 RPM, 2000 RPM on the generator. So this one is kind of essential to test out a generator. Another reason for using this inverter is this is the standard inverter going forward on all our semi-trucks. So this three-in-one is the higher voltage rating of 700 volts like our other new battery systems. That means that now on Topsy, we can actually upgrade the software and the firmware to behave for this one. So it's actually a good thing we're doing this. So we've got a problem. The new three-in-one is slightly bigger than the old one and it's just slightly too big to fit in the old box. We looked all around town. There's no boxes that meet this size. We're gonna have to order one in a couple weeks away. So I think what we're gonna do right now is just, unless we can figure out something else, cut a hole in the back and just let it stick out the back of the box. Cause at least the new one, it's now waterproof. The old one wasn't waterproof. It was all kind of exposed with electric cooling. The new one's liquid cooling. Sorry, the old one was air cooled. So therefore it couldn't be waterproof. This one's liquid cooled, so it can be waterproof. So it really doesn't matter if a little bit of road spray gets in there. We'll just put a cover over the back, something to protect it. And hopefully maybe we can find a box, but. There you go, got this hole cut out here. Now all the power wires are gonna be able to go right through here. Had to make some space for it, but ah, it'll work. This is why I'm so excited to put this in the headache rack of the truck. Or I mean in the back of the cab. All right, so good news, uh, the new BMS is here. This is the reason why we haven't been able to do full speed. We got the three in one, which would allow the power and the generator to just drive directly off the generator. But to get the maximum power, we need the battery management. It was actually a little computer that was gone in the BMS itself. 
but we're replacing the whole BMS because we found a much safer design through our testing that we can go with. I'm sure Eric can explain a lot more about that. Yeah, so the reason why we ended up going with these disconnects, these red switches here, is because the original design was revolving around fuses. And those fuses we had to literally take out physically. And, you know, they're quite annoying. So with the disconnect switches, now you have a nice switch that you can turn around. You can even lock it too for safe use. So the other reason why this box is safer is the original design, both battery connections were connected directly to an input on the contactor. Now we have a degree of separation where these are not connected anymore. They actually go to their individual disconnects, then going to the main contactor, making the system actually a true, truly isolated. Um, so it's a far better design and more importantly, it's a lot safer to play with. So I'm uh, really happy that we were able to improve on this in such a short turnaround. I mean, we really thought about doing this about two months ago and here it is. So uh, really quick prototyping on our part. Okay, so right now, this is just the air valve for the air horn. And before I disconnected the air ride seat because our BMS is located under this box. So we're just gonna take the floor pan out. Then we have access to everything under there. Real easy for maintenance. But I'm like, I better make sure there's no, there's still air in the system. With this steel braided line, this truck has now been parked for six weeks as we waited for this new BMS to get here. Very long six weeks, it felt like. Uh, but six weeks, I still have air in my air system. Compare that to a new truck. Show me a brand new truck rolling off the line that still has air after six weeks of parking. That's why you build it right. All right, so we got the BMS in, we got the three in one in. Flow Drawlic came out from Ontario to help us put it in there because there's been programming involved, which means that because it's a new BMS, new three in one had to be reprogrammed, going through that, making sure the computer works. Uh, that took three, four days. That never comes across in a video the way it should, but that was a ton of work that these guys did. Uh, we still got a few more things to do, but the truck is now moving, driving. Ah, uh, wanna go for a rip? Sure. Pockets. Drive around the parking lot first. Okay, we'll go around the parking lot. I'll let Theron know what we're doing. Hey, we're just gonna go do a loop around the parking lot. See how it's working. How we doing? How's the throttle feeling? Good. No, no. Uh, the last thing I didn't like was when I step on the throttle and cut the uh, generator out. Yeah, because you had to run the old free and one we had to run the engine really low rpm which means it would lug down and which means it would dog down yeah. so that's what i'm hoping is the problem because that's an entirely salt of the machine how does it feel right now feels good nice my little brake once i fire brake but still got throttle still got throttle and that gets locked oh. Fuck. <laughs> yeah that sucks you know what? i got a tough enough bumper that. We probably left shit on top of the headache rack. Yeah, we probably left. Okay. Perfect. Neutral. Okay, so a little update. Uh, we're going to do our first uh, road test with the new BMS. Seemed to do well on the parking lot. We forgot some shit on the top of the headache rack that fell off. Oops. Um, <laughs> I'm sure we'll watch the video back and see what was up there. It's somewhere in the truck. It, it'll, it'll, We'll find her here before we head up the road, but uh, I'm sure I'll look back at the video and be like, that's the thing I forgot. <sighs> Hope this goes well. Um, it's been a long four or five weeks without having the BMS. Um, obviously, we wouldn't been wanting to drive it. Uh, hopefully, the new programming. Steve has just run off to go get his laptop. He's going to be monitoring, observing what's happening. We're going to make sure we don't have any faults. But these guys have spent four days programming it all, so testing it, and I hope we're good. Because once we do this, then we can start doing some trailers, and that's where it really gets fun. Whew, this is nerve wracking. It sounds neat when it's running, eh? It does, doesn't it? It's kind of futuristic.
How are we doing for temperatures? Uh, gin temp, battery temp is good, powertrain temp is good. It's getting higher. There's no way it should be 39, because it's been, we've moved it two feet. Uh, inverters heat up even without running anything. Oh yeah? Yeah. They get hot very, very quickly. Okay. 34. That might be not accurate, but it was about 34. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta love that rubber block. Am I good enough? This is cool. It's super smooth. It's quiet, which is really eerie, but it's probably one of the smoother trucks I've been in. Like, I'm used to logging trucks going <laughs> and uh, just even, everything's not rattled apart. It's built, it's tough. It's not like plastic shit. It's hard bolted. And uh, I'm really impressed. That was cool. It's my first time ever driving Topsy. And it's, I guess, everything that I kind of expected because I know how awesome Topsy is. The last drive, we had no fault codes at all come up. A uh, little bit on the cooling. We're gonna have to probably change it, but we did have to take a part of the coolant lines. We think that just maybe we got a little bit of airlock on the cooling side, because uh, we weren't having these cooling issues before, but that's just maybe an air bubble somewhere in the line. So we'll reflush the coolant system, reprime it, make sure it's working the way it should be, and uh, go from there. But this is one of those cool things. It's a work in progress. The truck is definitely upgraded. We can run a higher voltage now. Instead of 500 volts, we're now pushing 600 volts, a little bit more power, a little bit more reliability. We increased the safety a lot. So overall, this has just been a fantastic accomplishment. Um, definitely did delay us a month there waiting on the parts, but hey, that's how it goes when you're prototyping. And we've definitely got a better truck for it.